So a table consists of one or more column families. Column families are scoped with the optional qualifier, which forms an additional level of indexing. In, uh, on disk in HDFS, um, the file system, uh, part of the Hadoop software stack, uh, HDFS is the distributed file system. Um, with, in, uh, in that storage, each column family is stored as a file. Uh, and uh, keys where, which are similar to each other, right, um, are packed adjacent to each other into blocks. So it's a very efficient means of storage. Uh, the takeaway here is that in general it's fast and cheap to scan adjacent rows and columns. So tape, uh, rows are stored in sorted order. Uh, each column has its own file. As tables grow, they are dynamically split into regions. Um, regions are then distributed to a number of servers called region servers. There can be any number of region servers on the platform. There's no architectural limit. Uh, in theory, you can support a very, very large amount of data, petabytes uh, of data by just adding more ser uh, region servers over time to serve this data as these tables grow. So uh, each table has a uh, region split limit. And once the amount of data contained within that region reaches this threshold, the region is split in half. And the uh, another component of the HBase architecture, the master, ensures that regions are uh, load balanced across the cluster. Uh, the master also handles uh, redeployments if an individual node fails. Okay, so um, this is a, a bit more uh, technical information um, that we probably need to discuss. So. So let me talk a little bit about HBase uh, 0.20, .0, the latest upcoming release. Uh, this is the first ever performance re release of HBase. The uh, focus for this release has been on improving performance for random access time, scan times, insert times. Uh, and so now we can say that as a random access store, we, are, we HBase is well suited for the storing and serving of data for uh, many types of web applications. Uh, before and during for prior releases, uh, 0 0.19, some of you may be familiar with, that had good uh, random access time sometimes, but unfortunately high latency and variability uh, in other cases. Uh, now that has changed. The, there are now significant performance gains but based, uh, due to the re-architecture for this release. Our random retards are similar to, uh, say, on MySQL. Um, about 20 to 100 times faster than our previous releases uh, with far less variability than before. And uh, in general, we achieve probably a better, uh, an order of magnitude better performance for most, for most uh, operations, scans, inserts, updates, deletes, what have you. So some specific performance numbers. Uh, like I said, this data is available on hpleace.org. So uh, what did we do for this release? Uh, HBase is um, implemented in Java. And um, one can have a, a philosophical discussion on whether Java is the mo most appropriate language uh, and runtime system to implement server-side software. Um, sometimes the garbage collector can trip you up, et cetera. And also the, uh, the libraries supplied with Java, although uh, algorithmically nice have performance problems. So if you use these very elegant abstractions in the Java library, you run into performance issues. So we, we realized this, right? So our guiding philosophy for zero to zero was to essentially un-Javify un everything. Um, so we do a lot of the work ourselves now. Uh, uh, internally, uh, such things as zero copy reads, um, block-based storage, uh, no use of Java trees, uh, that, that type of thing, um, a uh, custom developed uh, heap sort, um, uh, really thinking more in terms of implementing HBase as if it was a C or a C++ application, but in the Java language. 
And so uh, these, um, so we have a new um, data format, a uh, new file format, um, a new block caching subsystem, a new query API, a new result API, optimized serialization in all, at all layers of the system, and a new way of doing scanning. So through this re-architecture, we, uh, we improved our performance by an order of magnitude. We also integrated Zookeeper. Prior, during prior releases, we had this concept of master, right? And so I talked about it a little bit briefly, but the, 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 although there are n number of region servers, um, any of which can fail and their regions will be reassigned and you don't lose any data availability, right? Uh, there is a one master, which is a single point of failure. Uh, uh, and this is actually a limitation, arguably, of the big table model, right? So in order to be, um, to, to be consistent in the way that the big table is architected, there needs to be a master, a control function. So uh, we, we take, a, take a step back from that a little bit. And so some of the master functions actually can be distributed, right? So we look at the uh, Zookeeper subproject of uh, Hadoop, which is a uh, in-memory in in database um, designed to be um, fault tolerant uh, when set up in a 2n plus 1 form. And we find that uh, Zookeeper has a number of features built in which allow us to eliminate the master as a single point of failure in our architecture. So we now track cluster membership and detect dead servers by Zookeeper. We can do re recovery of failed region servers much more quickly than before. We have hot standby masters. Um, which can detect when the other master fails and, and take over seamlessly. Um, this, this way of managing the master region server relationship allows for rolling upgrades of the cluster during uh, upgrades for point releases. So there's no need to take down the uh, service, the data storage service, to update uh, for, for example, bug fixes. And some aspects of cluster configuration can be reconfigured because it's written into Zookeeper and not stored somewhere else without a full cluster restart. So perhaps this is, from my point of view as, a, as, as, a, as an HBase developer and architect, right, having no more single point of failure in HBase is the primary achievement of this release. Now, we also have uh, improved um, web service connectors, uh, which implement RESTful semantics. So HBase can be used in a similar manner as the S3 service. Right? And, and uh, one uh, new contribution to the HBase project, uh, so-called Stargate codename, is uh, something that I would hope, I hope to develop going forward to actually serve as a, um, a, a, as a way for enterprises to build S3-like storage internally in their enterprise. So HBase also has some extensions. Uh, earlier, I, I talked about how you give up most of the uh, features of relational databases when you use Bigtable or HBase. But we do have transactional tables. They're slower. They're an add-on. Um, they're not, it's not fully implemented. If a region server fails, for example, during a transaction, uh, the recovery of this is not fully implemented. However, if there is no region server failure, then you have you can um, you can initiate a transaction which spans multiple regions, uh, update a row, and then uh, the transaction will either commit or or uh, abort, right? Um, uh, if there have been other changes, because the the transactional table subsystem uses something called uh, optimistic concurrency control, which basically says, you know, optimistically, I assume that the transaction is going to complete. And so it will if there have been no other changes to that row. But if there have been, then it will roll back, and it's the client's responsibility to try again. Okay. We also support uh, a secondary index capability. We can have any number of secondary indexes in addition to the single primary key that the big table data model supports. And we achieve this by maintaining server-side, a separate index table for each secondary index. Um, and we use the transactional layer to maintain the consistency of these indexes.